is no escape, nor do we want it. We've come to thrive on it and each other. You can't get the adrenaline pumping without the terror, good people. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Christian and Horror back today. Now, look, if you watch this channel, one thing is abundantly clear. I love the 1980s. They're so fun. It's a decade full of decadence and just debauchery with 80s horror. It's the best. It is the best. Some of my all-time favorite movies are from the 1980s. So I wanted to do a video where we kind of take a break from that for a day. Let's talk about five modern horror movies that I absolutely love. Now, these are going to be movies that take place basically during this century. Some are as young as three or four years old, and with the old ones being maybe about nine or ten. Maybe not even that. But the point is, these are movies that are, I think, really good, fun movies to check out, especially to revisit. So I just want to go ahead and get started. The number five movie is I Love Haunted Houses. So any movie that takes place at a haunted house is just money to me. I can't go wrong with Hellfest. This was a movie that... I picked up on Blu-ray, completely skipped skip me by the theater. I don't remember any promotion for this movie. I don't remember seeing, seeing anything about this movie. I don't remember hearing anything about Hellfest. But Lord knows that I did buy it on Blu-ray because I was like, I don't know, something's telling me to just pick it up and try it. And I'm glad I did. Hellfest is extremely fun. Great color palette. I mean, just like a haunted house, it's bright. It's vibrant. There's some really great shots in here. And this is a fun movie. You've got a group of kids that go to a haunted house. You've got your love situations. You've got some fun characters in here. All meanwhile, this guy is just killing people. No rhyme, no reason. We don't know what's going on, but I know one thing's for sure. It delivers for horror fans. I love this movie, and I wish more people knew about Hellfest. I wish more people would check the movie out. If you haven't seen Hellfest... Give this a watch. I love it. Now, I have it on 4K as well, and I do recommend that 4K because the colors are so great. They're, the Haunted House is filled with blues and greens and, and and reds, and it looks great. But Hellfest is a modern horror movie I love, so definitely give this a shot. Now, the next one I want to talk about is a movie that involves one of my all-time favorite actors. That man's name is John Goodman. Now, if you'd have told me I would ever see a movie that made John Goodman freak me out, I'd have been like, there's no way. That's, that's Dan Connor. I, I love Dan. What are you talking about? Well, that happened with a movie called 10 Cloverfield Lane. I love this movie. Now, it's kind of like, not necessarily a sequel, but it's in the world of what that Cloverfield is. There was Cloverfield, then I think there was one after that, and then there was this one, or there was this one and one after that. I can't really remember. But when I think of Cloverfield, it is absolutely 10 Cloverfield Lane. A girl gets into this car wreck, she wakes up in this room, and she's chained up, she doesn't know what's going on, and this guy opens the door, and he's giving her food, he's like, we're under attack, things are happening, and you start to see the cracks in this guy's mental structure, so to speak, and there's this foreboding, tense feeling throughout this entire movie that I think is unmatched, it is great. Um, John Goodman delivers. He shows you that he is not just a TV guy. He is an amazing actor, and his performance in 10 Cloverfield Lane I thought was amazing. So I love this movie. It is one of my favorites from this era. I rewatch it semi often because I can't, I have to watch it again just to say, did, no, was I really creeped out by John Goodman? Yeah, I was. What a movie. I love it. If you haven't seen 10 Cloverfield Lane, please check it out for me. I don't think you'll be disappointed whatsoever. Coming up next for me, you remember that movie The Strangers? Came out around 2008. I remember loving that movie. Well, I had always said I wish they would make another one. And then out of the blue, a few years ago came The Strangers Pray at Night. I was so excited. I didn't see this in theaters, but I, of course, being a physical media person, I had to buy it. I love it. Because it doesn't really feel like the first one. It's got its own flavor. It's very 80s, which is the irony of this video is because we're talking about modern movies. But it feels very 80s. I like the family. I like the daughter. She's kind of like the outcast trying to figure out what she wants. And, you know, her survival is the most important thing in this movie to me. Because I was like, no, I want to see this chick keep going. I like this chick. She's cool. Um, the strangers are back. The sensibility of this movie is for the horror fan, I think. You know, this is a horror movie 
that's not necessarily made for the general public. To me, this is a horror movie made for the horror fan, and I think that's the best compliment I could give it. So nothing but love for Strangers Pray at Night. So fun. I don't know if it eclipses the first one to me because the first one was extremely creepy, but I love Pray at Night. I think it is a, a hoot, and I want one more. I want one more. Even though I think we've only got your boy left, give it to me. Give me one more, please, because I, I just need it. All right, next comes from the good people from A24. Now, they have established such a fan base for a number of reasons, but one of the most important reasons is they make amazing films, films that make you think, films that provoke you throughout the mind, films that really just are engaging to your psyche and movies that really just push the boundaries. One of those best examples to me is a movie called The Witch. Now, The Witch is probably one of the best from this label. This movie is what you would call a slow burn. But to me, a movie is either interesting or not interesting. I don't use the term slow burn very often. When I say that The Witch is interesting, I think that's an understatement. This is one of the scariest movies I've watched in a long time, and I think it delivers on its premise. It is creepy, it is foreboding, and what an ending. In pure A24 fashion, it's a movie that absolutely defies the odds in terms of what it can do with less, and it does it to the utmost ability. When you, look, when you look at the A24 label, you've got films like Hereditary that have eclipsed so many movies in its era. And it's a movie that has gone far above and beyond what people would, can expect from horror today. But The Witch is right behind that, I think. I think The Witch could be the second best from its label. While I think Hereditary is the best, The Witch needs that push again. I think this movie is that good. So if you haven't checked this out, Go for it. You won't be disappointed from The Witch. I think it's a masterpiece. And the number one on this list is a movie that I'm really excited to talk about because, quite frankly, I wasn't expecting to love this movie when I saw it. I remember I was staying in Michigan seeing Family, and my mother-in-law actually has a pretty good Blu-ray collection. And I was like, what is this movie, Ouija? Let me check it out. I watched Ouija, and I was like, well, that was absolutely run-of-the-mill okay. But I don't know what else to watch. Let me watch part two. I was shocked at how much I loved Ouija Origin of Evil. It has a lot of things going up against it. It's a sequel to a movie that had a subpar reputation, and it's a prequel. But I'll be darned if I didn't love Ouija Origin of Evil. The story, the characters, the feel eclipsed the previous entry in basically every way to me, and this is the one to watch. Ouija Origin of Evil delivers like a hot and fresh Domino's pizza. Guaranteed satisfactory. I can't put this movie over enough. Don't even need to really go back to the first one that much. Origin of Evil is the ultimate Ouija movie, and I had to put this at number one for that because it had so much going against it, I thought. So what a absolutely pleasant surprise revisiting Origin of Evil not long ago. And seeing it for the first time, even back then, this was a couple years ago, and I was like, why do I love this movie even more? What is going on? Why didn't they put this one out first? Oh, well, it's here. We've got it. Origin of Evil, man. I love this movie so much. So if you saw the first one and you were like, this is okay, but I'm not really interested anymore, trust me, go for Origin of Evil. It has no business being this good. I love this movie, and I think you will too. So the modern era really isn't that bad. As a matter of fact, there are some other movies that came out just last year that I think are mainstays in the world of horror. Movies like The Dark and The Wicked. You know, these are really good psychological movies. I think that the future of horror is scaring us right here. We've seen the blood. We've seen the guts. And while I love it and want more of it, nice rhyme, I am really excited to see what boundaries we can push in the world of horror in terms of the psychology and how things can make us feel genuinely uncomfortable. I think we're in a good place with horror and the sky is the limit. But what modern horror movies do you guys love? I would love to know some that you're a big fan of that maybe I could check out that I hadn't yet. But these are five that I think are good testaments to the era and movies that really deliver for the horror fan, not just the general public. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me some suggestions down below. I would really appreciate that. If you aren't subbed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe now and ding that bell so you never miss an upload. My name is Christian Hanahor, and we'll see you guys next time.